All right, and welcome everybody in Twitch and also on YouTube for our next deck. We got Gruel Monsters. So we got a Domri Raid deck here, which um, we were just talking about this in chat. The, the couple of times that I've played uh, Domri Raid decks uh, with like a bunch of creatures like this, they've been kind of inconsistent. You know, if you hit your curve, it feels really good, but... You know, if you stumble at all or just kind of have a lot of lands or not enough lands, it you know, there's not like a, a whole lot of play to the deck. I'm hoping that Vivian Reed, uh, like one thing you don't see in these decks very much are like Vivian's in the main deck. Um, and I'm hoping that Vivian's kind of help with that of like the ability to just continually gain threats. And also, you know, as we know, Vivian kills, uh, kills some important things in the format. And Vivian's just an amazing card. So... Um, yeah, so what we what we got going on here is we got our, our early creatures that put pressure on the opponent, and while they're dealing with that and um, and everything, and while we are like ahead on the battlefield and they have to deal with that, then we can resolve our planeswalkers with Domri and Vivian that help out. If the the board gets gummed up, we got our our air aerial attack here with Rekindling Phoenix and Scarg on Hellkite to help us out. So um, you know, we're just going to be attacking here and hoping to uh, have that get us across the finish line. Sideboard, I'm going to try a Shaper Sanctuary. So against the removal heavy decks that it, uh, kill our things, we can draw some cards. Daredevil is really good against all the blue-black decks. You can take like their Thought Erasures, so you can like f like Thought Erasure them and have a 2-1, or you take their Contempts or you know anything. It's really good against the blue-black decks. Um, Wild Growth Walker against Aggro for the life gain with the rest of the Explore package. Cinder Vines against some enchantment heavy control decks. Um, I like Collision Colossus also. So Collision is just our card against like Is It Drakes if we need more ways to kill flyers. Um, but then Colossus we can have even against like other creature heavy matchups where we want to get the trample in and and uh, and everything. I, I like this card quite a bit. Um, I, I'm hoping I have enough remove. I don't think we need Crawl Harpooner. Crawl Harpooner, I don't know. I don't. I don't love it. And I th like against a deck like is it Drake's. We'll have Lava Coils, Collision to kill their flyers. Vivian kill their flyers. Daredevil their Lava Coils to kill their flyers because they play a bunch of Lava Coils. So I think we have enough against Drake. Like I don't think we need Crawl Harpooners. Harpooner is awesome against Mono Blue. That's like the matchup where I'd want uh, Harpooners for sure. And we got rhythms against control. Get some haste. Another Bronte for mono red or enchantment heavy decks. But we got Gruel Monsters. Let's try to curve out. Rhythm of the Wild is unplayable without Land War Elves. Well, we have Land War Elves in our deck, so. That's good for us. Hmm. Okay. Game. You're not helping us curve out here without, without giving us any lands. It's difficult to curve out with zero lands. So making it making it kind of difficult here. Well, the rhythm of the wild is is to like you want to play it against control decks. Control decks aren't winning the game quickly. Keep them from countering your um, your creatures. And then also have the, the haste damage in to get under like sweepers and stuff like that. Yeah, only thing better than mulling to five is having to sit here and wait to mull to five for our opponent to do something. Oh, this may be a long match. 
Opponent may have a tough choice for which land to play. <laughs> you think they're logging on to Twitch? They're really scared of my four cards in my hand right now. Looks like we got a monster mirror. This is a really odd. This is just odd. I don't really know what to say. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, this is highly irre irregular. <laughs> Poor vigilant Bayloth. Never had a chance. Oh, yeah, the opponent could have gone to go make some hot pockets. But yeah, that's it's likely a connection issue. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guest? We'll we'll still we'll have some other action, just not really this match. <laughs> I guess not that match. Well, it still counts as a victory on the scoreboard, even though we just mulled the five and didn't disconnect. Really, that's all we had to do to win. That was not disconnect. I know it was a high bar. <laughs> hey, what's up? We are spawn. Dude, our deck is amazing, right? We just won that with. After Mullen to five. <laughs> our, our opponent's four eyes. Remember, I was just telling y'all about how yesterday I went to the eye doctor and I got glasses, and so in like the next like 10 days or so, I'm gonna actually have glasses. That I'll be able to be wearing and stuff. Be better for my eyes. I'm gonna be four eyes pretty soon. So no curious obsession. That's certainly good. That's true, Rail. I kind of want to just block this. Yeah, I'm just going to block that. Yeah, I haven't worn glasses in a couple of years, um, but I used to wear glasses. I wore glasses basically all the time, like throughout middle school, high school. Um, I never, I didn't get contact, like basically since I was in like third grade. I think I got glasses when, when I was in like third grade. I didn't get contacts until I was like, like 19. Um, so I've worn a lot of contacts since, like basically since high school. Uh, I didn't get the mana for the Hellkite. Um, I think I just Jade Light and look for a land, or could Domri? I think I just Jade Light look for lands. Oh right, that's Forest Forest. I was like, I was like, I was gonna coil. 
forest, forest. <laughs> First thing when I did, I looked at a tree. It was amazing how clear. Yeah, so I, I've been wearing contacts for a while now. All right, not letting them draw cards. No cards for you. I don't really want Hellkai to get countered. Hmm. There's too many line, too many lines right there, <clears throat> Domri. So they're at twenty. All right, Domri's doing their thing. But my last pair of glasses that I owned, I got the prescription probably like six to eight years ago now. Um, I broke those glasses a couple years ago by uh, in like a hotel room at a tournament. Um, accidentally, I guess, pushing them off of like the somewhere, wherever they were, pushed them onto the ground and got up and stepped on them. Alright, so they still have two mana available. <laughs> A little pick me up before the real fun begins. Dang. They only have, so they have two spells, so they're not going to be like activating this Terramander anytime soon. They're at six. That's their plan is just to block with a Tempest Gen. They're at six. That's not a good plan. But I can tell you that's not a good plan, opponent. We have a lot of power on the battlefield. Yeah, if you can resolve Hellkite against Mono Blue, it is real good. Um, so, Collision. Rhythm. Rhythm could, like, help our creatures resolve. Creatures resolving's fun. I don't think... Daredevil's going to do too much. Wildgrowth Walker can be pretty good against our opponent. The thing is, like, nice. He pulled off a true, true fire star combo. Awesome. Everything will be just fine. Everything, everything will be all right, all right. The thing is, what do, what do I want to take out? I mean, Domri is kind of the card to come out in this matchup. I don't know if I want to take out Domri though, because Domri is kind of the part, the point of our deck. What do you think, guest? So I think if it's not Domri, it's going to be Vivian. So I guess I'll just take out a couple of Vivians. Yeah, honestly, the the riot from Domri could be okay. Like we just have to make sure we have the the cards in hand. 
I'm keeping all the the low mana stuff. Um, I think just getting on the board in in our uh, in before like the opponent is is really imp uh, uh, important. So I want to keep all like the two and three mana creatures. Yeah, Vivian does a good job of killing Jin. That's true. Okay. Sounds good, guys. Ugh, they had Curious Obsession. On a creature we can't block this time. That's not good. can still do okay, honestly. Our creatures are kind of difficult for our opponent to deal with. Even though, like, they're on the play with their best possible start of unblockable one-drop Curious Obsession, like, it's their best possible start. I think we still may win this. Oh yeah, our opponents played counter spells. Yeah, this mono blue aggro. Yep. The Tempest Gen, of course, is, is really bad for us. Because um, now I can't just... I, I can't just like be attacking with the Rekindling Phoenix. We got to leave Phoenix back. Jade Light being a 3 2 is, is a problem because Jade Light doesn't get to attack through Tempest Gen. I think I should have just kept the Growth Chamber Guardian on top the first time and then graveyarded it the second time. Maybe. Then Jade Light's a 4 3. Because I need these all to be 4 3s to be able to attack through Tempest Gen. It's a little greedy by just putting it in the graveyard immediately. Of course, we would have just drawn a land for turn if I would have done that play. <laughs> yeah, just because I just want more cards. So I think our opponent has. I think our opponent has the 2-2 two -two to keep the, the Phoenix from coming back. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no, so the 2-2 two -two wouldn't matter. Wouldn't stop the Phoenix from coming back. Oh, yeah, no, because it wouldn't make the egg. Right, because it would just die and, and not make the egg. Yeah. Take action. Well, since I 
since I got that extra land, then I got to draw Rekindling Phoenix. Um, so even though my, my Jaylight Ranger wasn't a 4-3, a we got to draw Rekindling Phoenix. So it kind of worked out for us, because Rekindling Phoenix is kind of necessary here. So that actually worked out pretty well. Yeah, that misplay with the J-Light Ranger is the reason we're not dead. Yeah, basically. I don't know why they think that this is a good play. I just get to... I get, just get to block with my Phoenix. Unless they have, like, another way to kill this token again. I mean, I, I feel like if I'm them, I'm just putting the Curious Obsession on the Miscloak Herald and attacking for three and drawing two cards and having the 5-4 back as a blocker. And just hitting for three and drawing two. I don't know. I think we're dead here, though. Unfortunately. I only have green creatures. And... Our opponent has lethal. But... We're trying. Our opponent may miss it. Night Owl! Best of one tomorrow, anytime! Persistent Petitioners. Alright, we got Persistent Petitioners donation deck for tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that deck list. You want to see a deck list? Here you go. But entrancing melody? Wait, what happened? What happened? So they they just didn't kill me? Yeah, they didn't they forgot to pump the horse. So they only dealt 9. So then they stole my tapped 4/4, four, four, but it's tapped. They didn't even steal an untapped one. I could have just taken an untapped creature. Wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I guess your deck is just super lucky. <laughs> hey, Angel, happy Friday. This is a good opener. Certainly like this one. So deck list for tomorrow's best of one with Persistent Petitioners is 24 Island. Three, Chemistry's Insight. Four, Quench. And 29 Persistent Petitioners. <laughs> uh, so like, if this is mono blue aggro, I want the, the lava coil. Or if this is Drake's, I want the lava coil. But if it's control, I don't want the lava coil. So it's this is kind of hard. I'm going to just go graveyard. Song. Let's see. Ah, it's control. Good call by me. It's kind of feeling control.
And I feel like the other, um, the other decks I liked where we were at, um, with these five drops. Alright, blue-green. You know, like this this just kind of screams counter spell with all that mana there. So it's like why why play a spell whenever we can just attack and draw a card? Our opponent has to deal with these things. I mean we had we have a two exactly a two turn clock, so they're gonna have to deal with these, and then they deal with these next turn, and then we resolve Vivian or Hellkite. Alright, so it looks like a fog deck. I don't really know why I didn't attack with the land world too. I was thinking like they were gonna fog, like two mana fog, and then I'd be able to pay for syncopate. But of course with the four mana there, they're certainly gonna come to insight now. I gave them that, that opportunity, but we're killing that. So Hellkite. No one knows the wilds like um, I do. Hellkite can kill the opponent next turn. Because Hellkite can just deal damage to them. We'll just play the Hellkite while they're tapped out here. And put a counter on it. Let me just deal one damage to the opponent with it. Alright, Cinder Vines, this is the perfect matchup for it. Hasty creatures that can't be countered. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, I guess, I'm, well, I'm taking out the four Lava Coils. Okay, Annie. Are you okay, Annie? Probably want a Lebrontodon. Hmm. Just gonna go with this. I'm not gonna play rhythm. Colossus for, to go fast. Don't think we need that. I think we're gonna be fine. He just went with a hasty Galta on turn five. Heck yeah. Now that's a. That's a uh, Rhythm of the Wild right there. Yeah, Phoenix is just a good card. I'm keeping it. Oh, man. Just try Hopefully draw one red mana. I like this hand a lot. Turn three, Vivian. Sign me up. They should be able to help us find red mana. Of course, I don't have the opportunity to, to play Vivian now next turn if we don't draw a land. We did. We good. Hmm. 
Certainly did not consider Frilled Mystic. Thought they had Chemister's Insight here. I certainly thought that that was going to be a chemist's insight. Well, if they have another frilled mystic, we're in trouble. Yeah, Kalua King, you could have warned us. Gone downhill. They found they have another search for Escanta. <laughs> yeah, it's going downhill. Yeah, that was also pretty unfortunate that I had to uh, explore Cinder Veils to the graveyard because we didn't have red mana at the time. Yeah, Cinder Vines is exactly what we want in this matchup, though. We're going to need, like, eight. yeah, it'd be nice to have, like, eight Cinder Vines, right? Maybe, you know, I, th I think that destroying Search Roscanta is is really good for us. What if I didn't destroy Search for Iskanta? Would our opponents... Would like the one damage... Each turn, like each spell, would they be? Would they kill us first? It's very possible we don't take another turn here. You know, our opponent just needs five extra turn spells, and they already have one in hand. For how much they get to activate uh, as Kanta? Yeah, we're not gonna win though. That's like multiple Ascanta activations each turn and still have the mana to cast Nexus of Fate. Hmm. Yeah, especially being being on the play is a lot better for Cinder Vines also. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's... I probably won't activate it this time. Can we draw a land, please? Should have been a little more specific on the land I wanted.
Yeah, I, I would think this would be difficult for our opponent to win through the two center vines. We'll see. See what kind of disenchants they have. This is looking really good for us. Got eight spells left, now seven spells left. So life total went from 10, so with this attack went to eight, and then with that spell went to seven. So basically their life total is at seven right now. Six. Ooh, that hits him down to four. All right, we can't find more green mana, so let's just play this land or elf. Opponent's at four. Opponent's at three. Or sorry, yeah, three. Yeah, opponent's at three. Yep, our opponent was, yeah, they were hoping that we were going to activate the Cinder Vines there. All right, 3-0. Cinder Vines. That's a good card. Again, specifically, Wilderness Reclamation, Nexus of Fate. That feels good. Yeah, still, yeah, I certainly make some misplays in paper. A lot less, because you have a, you know, in paper, I'm a lot more focused on exactly what's going on. You know, I have, like, the cards in hand, everything, and it's it's a little slower. You know, you like, you're talking out with your opponent of, like, things that's going on. You know, like, you're explaining, you know, saying what's going on and stuff. And I don't make as, as many mistakes as I do on on Arena or Magic Online, like, when I'm, you know, because here I'm I'm reading chat, talking talking with chat, and... And a lot of a lot of times that I that I'm playing, I'm just kind of playing off, off like um, out of sorry not off but out of the corner of my eye. I'm kind of just just playing, and so uh, the game you know the game plays game plays a lot faster and everything like that. So I certainly make a whole lot more mistakes here, but that doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes uh, in paper also. Because, yeah, you, you kind of have more time to think of paper. Because, like, like, the whole time, like, you're shuffling or, uh, um, like, your opponents also taking, like, their time to think and, and so on. And and I'm a lot more focused um, while I'm playing. Because here I'm, I'm trying to, while I'm playing here, I'm, like, trying to, like, think of things to say also and, and just kind of talk as well. You know, there's certainly a good amount of dead air while I'm talking, but I I try to keep that to a minimum. Yes, I I wouldn't. Yeah. So so question is, if I was playing in like an RPTQ, uh, would I use like Arena to test? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's that's that's I mean that's honestly what I would do. Is, I mean that's I use Magic Online forever to test before. Now if I was playing a standard one, I would I would still just use Arena to, to test here. Um, it's easier to test for those tournaments when I'm not streaming because I'm paying more attention whenever I'm not streaming. Also, um, 
No, that... Right. Because Spellbreaker has Trample, so that's why our opponent made that block. Because this thing could turn into a 4-4 four four also. So yeah, it's harder to test for the tournaments while streaming, for sure. Because you can't... I don't know. Like, while I'm, while I'm streaming and talking and everything, you know, afterwards, at the end... I don't really remember exactly a whole lot of like what happened every single match or even like all the decks I played against because you know I'm just doing you know I'm thinking about a lot of other things also like um that Shauna Sisei's legacy is going to be pretty big I mean well it already is pretty big it's not going to be it already is um Now see, this is why I don't like Hero Precinct 1. I just don't think Hero Precinct 1 matters most of the time. Like, our our opponent had it out early, like, best you could possibly have. And they're just... If we just draw a land, they, they're dead. And, like, Hero Precinct 1, if you're drawing it on turn 5 or 6 or 7, you know, you're drawing it in a later game, it's just horrible. But even with having it on turn 2 and turn 3 and having, like, you know, all these perfect flowers to, like, help it out, really, and everything, it's still just not going to really matter. All we need to do is draw a land and they die. Of course, if we don't draw a land, we die. But just got to hit our fifth land here. That's it. Easy does it. Landwolf, you're an embarrassment. Okay, are we dead? We may not be dead. It's gonna block six things. Oh, hey, there's there's all those lands I was just talking about. That'd be nice to to find. We found them. <laughs> I I do not agree with you. This tuna with bacon. Uh, I do not think Elf is secretly bad. Uh, why is Flower in so many decks? Flower is not in very many decks. Um, you don't see it very often, but Flourish is, is awesome. Flourish is a really, really good card. Um, and then it also just kind of helps fix your mana. It helps make sure that you're not color screwed ever, uh, which is which is certainly a benefit. Like where you can, you know, if you have just planes in your hand, you go get your forest. If you have forest in your hand, you go get your planes. Oh, uh, that was a bad block by me. Bad block by me. Oh, no, I didn't see that little cheeky. That's awesome. That march. Well, I got. I mean, this this loss is my fault for that bad block. Looks like that march here, though. Standard. Yeah, I like standard more than modern. All right. Well, if I don't make that block with the phoenix, I have the haste, hell kite, I have lethal in the air. I didn't consider baffling end. With that block, so that was just a bad block. All right, so this is where we're going to use uh, Colossus to be able to trample over. Yep, Hawkeye's going to bring me. Good luck, aren't you, Hawkeye? 
Is Walker better than Growth Chamber Guardian? No, I don't have Cannon 8. I don't really have very much for this matchup. I don't think I really want Brontodon for their enchantments. I guess they could have, like, History. I still don't really want to destroy that. For It's a lot of mana. Yeah, I, I like w Walker. Like, destroying a Baffling End doesn't matter. You just get, like, if you sacrifice a Brontodon to kill a, ba a Baffling End, you just trade your 3-4 Dinosaur for a 3-3 three, three Dinosaur. Like, that's not even a good trade. Alright, we just have to draw, like, two lands. Two lands and we're really good. Spellbreaker into Phoenix, and then with these, yeah, just two lands. Opponents had a five-card hand. They're playing five-card Monty. <laughs> I could see doing that, changing, changing your avatar if you go on a long losing streak. Makes sense. Uh, I I, ha I haven't done that myself, but I'd... I could see doing that. I like Vivian though. Okay, we are not getting towards those lands that I was saying. Lands. There we go. <laughs> Jace has been kind to me for now. You always have the Johnny up. It's hard to be a genius surrounded by lesser minds. <laughs> I stand That's on pretty the conceited. shoulders of giants. So let them trade their 1-1 for the branch walker. Okay, they're not even gonna do that trade. These results are an anomaly not to be repeated. Yeah, I think more avatars would be good. Um that's something that the Wizards has always been kind of behind on. They never, they've they've done a pretty bad job of updating those. But like, there's not like, like the new Planeswalkers don't have avatars, do they? Like, there's not like a Domri or a, a Kaya or a Dovin. I don't remember seeing those. Hmm. A cry and so collision can deal the six damage to Shalai to kill it, or you know, we give our creature trample. And kind of do either one.
all the Ravnica guild leaders as avatars. That would make sense. Yeah, that would certainly make sense. You could have, like, your guild. So I can, I can play Colossus, and it's... I mean, I guess I could just kill my opponent if I just Colossus on one of the other things. I could also just not play Colossus. Alright, so I'm, I'm trying something different. So, I could just Colossus on the Phoenix or the Spellbreaker and just kill them. But I also don't really... Like, I think I can probably win this without showing my opponent Colossus. That's what I'm thinking. Hey, Neuritis is back! For the 19th month in a row. With that tier 3 sub. Yep. Hawkeye gave us the victory. Good job, Hawkeye. Thank you so much, Neuritis. Unless I had a lot of subs a, a month ago, we've been... A lot of subs are expiring. So it actually says 93 now. It was like 80... 80... I don't know. 89? No. 81? Like 81 at the beginning of the stream? Something like that. Yeah, Dom Redux doing well. Doing good, doing good. Whoa, Enderice is gifting out 10 subs. Maybe that's what that's what we're missing. So, Mind Racky, Giggling Warlock, Gold Staff, Hey Doc, Fire Lich, Cascade, Oriax, Eddie Nuck, and Bonsai and Hank with your subs. Get your hype butts in the channel. <laughs> yeah, so much for the whole inspiring thing. Eighty-three, twenty-one, two packs coming up after this. Thank you so much, Neritis. You're awesome. <laughs> All right, so our hands are kind of slow. And against, like, the token deck, they could certainly just go really wide. We'll see if that happens or not. I would like... Dang. I was going to say, I'd like a Lava Coil for that, but we didn't get it. Hey, and then Pedro getting that gifted sub as well. Pedro, get some hypo emotes. Hmm. This doesn't look so good for us. I need another red mana source. Oh, Kalua King, I think, I think your Twitch Prime uh, wore off if you're using the Twitch Prime sub. Okay, I guess that's kind of a good sign for us. With our... Alright, so our opponent just has two cards. It's not a whole lot of cards. Just one card. The cards in our hand can beat the cards that are on the battlefield here. It's just March of the Multitudes. That's a good draw. It's just like March of the Multitudes um, and Tristani. 
Like, those cards can be a huge problem. So, really hoping they didn't have no Tristani. Like, last turn, they could have played Tristani if they had it. Viva, Viva Java released today. All right. Intrusion Point is next. That's why that's what I like to hear. Well, hope everything goes really well for Viva Java, Neuritis. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm not going to play around the baffling end. Again, I'm not going to just sit here and take three damage each turn. They have a baffling end, they have a baffling end. You know, creature dies to removal. Yada yada. Oh well. I, I would rather them have that card. Um... Rather than have that than uh, March of the Multitudes. The Shauna Sisei's legacy, though, is a little worrisome. All right, good. They didn't didn't gain anything here. So Hellkite's ability costs four mana. So next turn, I can pick off two one ones, and then block Shauna, who'll only be a six power, or so he'll only be four power. Hmm. Or I could just go Wild Growth Jade Light. And try to hit more land drops. And gain six life. It's not a land. So I'm going graveyard. I want land. Hellkites, I just want land. There we go, Kalua King, and getting that Twitch Prime sub in. Thanks, Kalua King. All right, we're gonna chump. Actually, I don't even think I need to chump. Yeah, you just take. You can just take this. Are we storming right now? We are storming off. We are storming off. We are at 24 subs on the day now. So I can do this plus activate Hellkite. And that's fine because we can do that plus activate Hellkite next turn. Get these heroes out of here first. We're we're playing green red control now. Thanks, Narinen. Gotta get these hypos for Narinen. There we go. For the fifth fifth month with the sub. I really hope they didn't just draw March to the Multitudes. Alright, it doesn't look like it. Alright, we're turning the corner. If we get um if we get one more one more land, we can go land Domri, Domri take up add mana, activate Hellkite. That seems like a, a fun thing to do. So yeah, uh, I got codes to redeem for sealed and draft. Will that help me get wild cards quickly? Uh, I don't play limited at all. I mean, it'll help a little bit, not You're gonna not this is too true. much, but I mean, it's certainly worth worth redeeming them and doing it.
All right, next turn we'll have <clears throat> other Hellkite coming in, being all hasty. All right, thanks, Glue King. Um, I, I did both. I, I bought, I, I bought gems, um, originally, but I also did a whole lot of drafts. I, I drafted a ton to get guilds of Ravnica and did a lot of limited for Ravnica Allegiance also, but didn't need to do nearly as much limited in Ravnica Allegiance, um, because of how, like, the, um, the algorithm changed, how you can't open up fifth copies anymore. Oh, heck yeah. Happy Pie should definitely get the iOS version of Viva Java. It's also just fun to say, Viva Java. But you know, I've been playing Arena, you know, every day since like November, since the beginning of November. And so we've been just, just been getting a whole lot of, um, you know, that's how we kind of built the collection up from then. Um,. So we have five, six, seven, eight mana right now. All right, Dom resembles at eight. And then each end step, you just make a four, four. <laughs> My muscles may be small, but watch out when I flex them. I guess I, I could have attacked with Wild Growth Walker last turn, uh, with it being four power if the opponent blocks with Krasis. Um, then I get to ping it to death. Yeah, that's kind of my plan is have the the Hellkites go go upstairs with the ability, have them sit back to be able to block the Alright, so doing... This is kind of risky. Like, this kills my opponent if they have nothing. If they have nothing, this is lethal. But if they have stuff, if they don't die somehow, then we could certainly be dying on the way back. Yeah, I can activate Hellkite ability again. So they could have, like, settle the wreckage. Uh, basically settle the wreckage to kill us. Hey, TK. Thanks for getting that sub in again for the second time. Sub number 25 on the day. Spellbreaker, good call. Good call. I forgot about Spellbreaker, meaning that we don't get to... Uh, don't mean that Settle doesn't work. And that's yet another win. We are 4-0. Oh, 
Hawkeye luck. <laughs> he looked over. He's like, why are you yelling at me? All right, we're cracking open three packs. Let's get some packs for all those subs. Uh, that last match. So we're going M19, Rivals of Ixalan, and Ixalan. I don't have that many Dominaria cards left to get, open up, so that's why I'm doing these ones. Um, so let's see what we get. First off, Ixalan pack is a Conqueror's Galleon. That card's really good and limited. And like a, you know, you get like a real slow deck if you're able to to transform it. Because with it being a 210, it just never never dies. The art on this card too is just amazing. Like that's a, some really cool art. Like both sides, that looks pretty awesome. But yeah, you just attack with it as a two ten, then you then you flip it, and then you get to start drawing cards and loot and all, all that kind of stuff. It's a pretty pretty sweet vehicle. All right, rivals of Ixalan. What do we got? Golden Guardian. Also, talk about another cool flip artifact. Um, no, Masco, you could, you could fill some decks out. It'll be a, be a little while still before the next set's out. Also, awesome art. And really awesome if you get to flip this, because look at that, it's... When you tap this, it's tap, add two mana of any color. So it's a land that adds two mana of any color. That's such a valuable land. Um, and that's also four and tap it and start making four fours. Um, the problem is you have to pay two to and fight a creature you control and, and have Garden Go Golden Guardian die and to transform it. So it's, it's really hard to... To transform this thing, but if you do, that land is insane. Goldforge, Goldforge Garrison is insane power. But you have to somehow transform this thing. So that's the tough part. Think I should do a Golem deck with this? I could, like, probably playing this with like Ripjaw Raptor. Like Ripjaw Raptor, you fight. Like, you get to draw a card because you deal damage to the Ripjaw Raptor, and the Ripjaw Raptor is a 4-5. I guess that's, like, the best thing to have with that card. All right, and the M19 pack is an Infernal Reckoning. Not too good. Oh, yeah, maybe a Karn deck. You have some like constructs. What's the my screen's frozen? What's like the button that you press to? Yep, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Yep, streaming tomorrow, normal time. What's the button you press to like exit? I thought it's like F four. F four is not working. Alt F4. There we go. That one worked. All right, we got we got to get to our final boss. Gotta get to our final boss. We are currently 4 0. Oh, that's a good point. Death Touch Critters. We have like the, the Death Touch Critter with Afterlife. That's a good one that they could have. All right, final boss, and we even have an extra life, even if we lose this. 
So the question is, does it match you against another 4-0 person or does it give you randos? It tries to match you against another 4-0 person, but it also tries to um, match up with like this, uh, this specific, or sorry, it, so it tries to match you up against somebody who's like 4-0, but it also tries to match you up quickly. Um, so it doesn't like take like a real long time to like find like a 4-0 player. Um, it just kind of matches up, matches up quickly. Then, so, so sim, you know, same or similar record or speed are the two things that it tries to match up with. So I don't want to play yet another land war off into a Gates of Blaze. The Gates deck just goes way over the top of these creature decks, as we as we saw with our Team or Vanifar deck. So I I don't think we're going to be winning this. I'll be pretty surprised if we if we win this. You call it anarchy. For me, it's just business as usual. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. But we're gonna see. Domri can can help us out a lot, like with the haste. Can certainly help us. Yeah, FF7 is one of my favorite games. We're in, we're not in the worst spot. A little pick me up before the real fun begins. <laughs> yeah, I will say I actually think I may like FF9 a little more than FF7. When I was whenever those games came out when I was younger, I liked FF7 more. It was my favorite. But recently, I replayed both games, um, and I really liked uh, I really really liked uh, FF9 uh, after replaying them here. Um, so four, five, six. So if I if I play this, I just tap those. Then that's going to be five, uh, nine, eleven. You're gonna hurt when this is through. I think I'm just gonna play this. And get another one. And we get a hit down to three. We do one less damage by playing the Growth Chamber Guardian instead of the Hellkite. Um, but, you know, we still have Hellkite in hand. And and we get to replace Growth Chamber Guardian. I mean, yeah, a board clear doesn't really uh, help our opponent too much. Because we still um, just have hasty creatures, so... Yeah, Final Fantasy IX is, is just awesome, and I like the gameplay on Final Fantasy IX quite a bit. I I was I played both when I replayed both of those. I I uh, got like the they're both like apps on the phone, like for Apple. They're like fifteen dollars for seven and nine, um, and then with nine, um, with that. Um, Uh, there's like a way, like there's like an option to be able to, um, I'm, I'm not a PlayStation or Xbox person, honestly. I don't have either one. Um, when I was younger, I had like a PS2. 
Uh, there's a way to like play at like one and a half speed basically and so it makes the battles a lot you know faster and everything and that was like the one thing that was kind of annoying on F ff9 is like the the battles were a little slow for like leveling up and so like playing at one and a half speed was really good for that domri ultimate is at eight and it just puts a four four at at uh at the beginning of each end step you make a four four so that's your end step, your opponent's end step. You know, both end steps, you make a 4-4. Four, four. Alright, so the double double sweeper gets rid of the... Um, gets rid of the... Um, Rekindling Phoenix. That three life from Plaza Harmony is really annoying. I think I'm just going to ultimate Domri. Wild beasts are bringing your comeuppance. Oh, no. Yeah, I played... Yeah, I had a PS1 before. That's... Yeah, that was like one of my very first video game systems. Uh, it was a PS1. And, um... I remember we... I, my brother and I got a PS1 for Christmas one year. And we got uh, two games along with it. And those were the two games we got were Final Fantasy VII and Resident Evil 2. And it was like, shortly after the PS1 was released, we were just so excited. We played those two games so much. And at the time, I liked... Uh, at the time, I, I really liked um, Final Fantasy VII more. Um, I turned into a, a fan of Resident Evil later. So hopefully we get to draw our Cinder Vines in our sideboards. Okay, you had Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I haven't played like the, the Resident Evil 2 remake, like the brand new one here, but I, I, I later on got a GameCube and I got Resident Evil 0 through 4 on the GameCube and I still have those. Uh, to this day, but I didn't have, um, I haven't seen like the, the new Resident Evil 2 remake. I think I tried Silent Hill and, you know, didn't like it, too scary for me kind of thing. I think I tried Silent Hill. I remember I liked... I think I liked the Silent Hill soundtrack. I'm not sure if it was the very first Silent Hill, but I remember for some reason I had a Silent Hill soundtrack that I liked. Which is weird. I'm not sure why. Um... What are the last two cards I want to cut? Is Rhythm better than Domri?
Vivian's really good against their enchantments, though. Phoenix is good against their sweepers. I'm gonna cut one rhythm, one Domri. Alright, back to the normal playlist. It's not a not a great hand. It's not ideal. Yeah, it's certainly possible I should have been doing Domri's minus three a little more. I don't know, we just always had creatures to be playing. The Plaza Harmony life gain was rough. The RE2 remake looks scary intense. Nice. Good, that's what it's supposed to be. that's how it's supposed to look. Hmm. So I can attack for seven. Just try to like a three turn clock. Or I can just get a four four. Let's just let's just go. Yeah, I I never played five. Four was like the last one that I played. That was like that was like the end like when I stopped playing video games. Alright, so we almost killed our opponent. We tried. But they had the sweeper. That's a good card. Cindervine is pretty good for us here. Yeah, uh, yeah, we played Smash. Um, yeah, I certainly played Smash before. Uh, I, I took like a, a long break from video games. I'm getting back into them now. Um, I took a, a good long break from them though. But I have the new... Let's attack with both. Yeah, sure, they can kill a Jade Light. Um, I have, uh, whatever it's called, a switch now. Yeah, Breath of the Wild is, has been my favorite game also. Love and playing some Breath of the Wild. But I, I've, I've gotten the... I've beaten three Divine Beasts now. Um, uh, that thing. 
So much life. So much life. Um, I got the... Whenever I got, like, the third... You know, three rings of the stamina bar, it won't let me get any more stamina bars. So now I have to get... Uh, hearts. Back up to 30. Their deck's just too powerful. Alright, four and one. We got one more chance at a final boss. Let's try to run it back. All right, back to the final boss playlist. Good opener. That's what I like to see. Let's let's get one more land. Yeah, well, two more lands would be nice, but turn two spellbreaker. Yeah, we had a we had a fast hand. We came close. But just, you know, Deafening Clarion got us. Death Touch Afterlife 1. So I can coil that and then go Growth Chamber Guardian, or I can just play a Phoenix. I'm just gonna play the Phoenix. I'll wait till next turn to coil. See if this resolves. Oh, okay. One to hit land drops with that. So we'll just attack with the Phoenix. Just being patient. We don't we just don't need to lava coil immediately. And Thief of Sandy to the bin. I wish Girl Spellbreaker gave us hexproof all the time. Just our turn, though. It's not like Shalai. Ah, more Death Touch. Gross. Yeah, the Vanifar deck we struggled with. Uh, we just struggled with decks with sweepers. You know, like we just played against two decks that, that had a good amount of sweepers and, you know, couldn't beat them. All right, Kalua King. Oh, I Have a good time. forward to seeing you running away. Maybe I'll hang on to this, if that's all right with you. That's a good minus. Jade Light and Branch Walker, that's good. Our opponent can it can it use both the enforcers like they can both attack Domri and kill Domri. Um but then they're not sitting here blocking the spellbreaker that's gonna be attacking them. That's another way to do it as well. You 
expect me to tuck my tail between my legs. While they're tapped out, let's Growth Chamber Guardian activate. Start uh, stockpiling these Growth Chamber Guardians. While Phoenix keeps doing Phoenix stuff. <laughs> Got a Woodland Stream for a daily ICR. That doesn't sound like the best daily ICR. So there was an opportunity there to um, kind of glad I never used the lava coil. I was gonna say there's an opportunity that Phoenix attack the Doom Whisperer coil. Um, They have to block. I really hope they don't have more hostage takers. So we're we're ahead on the battlefield. And we have five cards in hand. The thing is we we don't have a whole lot of mana, so we can't just do lots of stuff. Yeah, that's that's our bottleneck right now is is the mana. Oh, it does have another hostage taker, so that's a little annoying. Just a little annoying. Like it's not like we still have a Skark and Hellkite, you know, so we're still doing just fine there. Um All right. Okay, I can just bolt them, untap, bolt them again. There we go. Got game one. Give me back my land, War Elf. Mean opponent. All right, just gotta get one more game. Shaper Sanctuary seems like that's a fine card. Did we really see spell? Okay, yeah, they had Thought Erasure and Contempt. Yeah, let's get these Daredevils in here too. Um, what are the three cards that I want to cut? I mean, I guess attacking on the ground is not going to be as valuable with them having like those one, two. Death Touch Afterlife creatures. I could see just trimming on like Branch Walkers. But it may be kind of difficult to hit land drops without Branch Walkers. Am I worried about that? Yeah, maybe Spellbreaker. Death, yeah, it does walk into the Death Touch and it doesn't gain us any value. Yeah, maybe it is just Spellbreaker.
Collision does kill Doom. I like Collision. Yeah. I like Collision. I like killing Doom and Thief of Sanity. I think killing Doom and Thief of Sanity is pretty important. I'll get rid of one Domri. I don't want to go too little on creatures. Too low on creatures. All right, game two. We got you, final boss. Like a boss. Turn to JR. No. I need that land war elf. All right, it's not Thief of Sandy, at least. The deck's not helping me. Drawn five drop, four drop, four drop. However, that is Thief of Sanity. I can't beat Vivian. Wild animals I, like. People? I could beat this. So Vivian much. I can't beat. That's just unfortunate. Killing our land war elf and it's just never drawn a land. If we were on the play, we could have at least had the Jade Light Ranger on turn two before the moment of craving. Um, explore two spells to the to the bottom. Hey Code Junk, I'm doing good. Doing good. Hope you're doing Hope you're doing fine. Alright. This one looks a little better. We got our three lands. We have an, a removal spell for a thief of sanity. Cool. Ooh, explore time. Bow. Oh, yeah, yep, Magic Fest there in Toronto. Is it standard? Hmm, it's modern, okay. Cool, you're playing the standard side events, nice. Good call. Lot of Razor is a hell of a card. Rip, Phoenix. Down, down. I hope they don't have the Death Touch creature. I got punished for not keeping the branch walker on top because we drew a land. If I would have kept branch walker on top, we would have just been able to play branch walker here and, and still get the land also. Okay, they don't have anything in their graveyard right now. No, deck. No more lands, deck. 
No more lands. Okay, Mass, you're playing Popper with the best deck ever. What's the best deck ever? Ugh. It's a good draw. I guess they get a beasts. They get a hasty no Hellkite though. Like Alright, maybe I shouldn't have played this. I guess I should have waited a turn for collision for the Hellkite. Um but still they can't Hellkite cannot kill Vivian because we got because we found the Lanor Elf. So they can only Yeah, they can't even if they attack out, they can't kill Vivian. So the Lanor Elf was a clutch. Most wounds can heal. <laughs> 36 petitioners, 24 lands. Is that really the best deck ever? Come to me. We're playing uh tomorrow we're gonna be playing um We're going to be playing a little uh, uh, Persistent Petitioners deck as well in best of one. It's 29 Persistent Petitioners, 24 lands, uh, 3 Chemister's Insights, and 4 Quenches. So we're doing some best of one tomorrow with that. That was a donation deck. They don't have a Thief of Sanity in their graveyard. They have a Hostage Taker. I don't know if I want to give them Death Touch Afterlife, though. In their graveyard. I think I, I guess I'll just let Vivian take a, a hit for one. Strike me, and you strike nature. The wilds are my shield. Moment of craving and thought erasure. They're at sixteen. Eight mana. I, I don't have the mana to Daredevil, Thought Erasure, and play Hellkite. Lazav does not give ETB effects, no, because it's already on the battlefield. The, the Vivian's gonna be dying here. <clears throat> oh gosh, so am I. All choked up. The thing that Daredevil, Thought Erasure would like make sure that our Hellkite's protected. Hey, yeah, okay. I guess it wouldn't really necessarily make sure because because they get to pay the life and surveil a bunch. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we always cat streaming around here. Aren't we Hawkeye? Okay. Oh, they just got to surveil another Doom Whisperer into the graveyard with their other Doom Whisperer and then turn that Lazav into a Doom Whisperer. 
That's pretty good. But I was a I wasn't planning on blocking anyway, so that doesn't hurt. I've seen worse. Let's just get this Lazav out of here. If I go attack, attack, if I attack with everything, they kill one of these four power things and they get a 1-1. One, one. But we hit them down to five. I like pressuring their life total with, the, with them having Doom Whisper on the battlefields. You know, making it harder for them to surveil is certainly what I'm all about. This is a really close game, though. It's a close third game in our last final boss here. Alright, Hawkeye Luck. Yeah, we need Hawkeye luck. Ugh. That thing's scary. Bunch of scary stuff. Alright, we attack in. They block two. And all of our creatures are lethal. We have three lethal attackers. They have two eligible blockers. And you know you can't have eligible blockers downfield. Alright. Good job, Hawkeye. Hawkeye luck. Yeah, Hawkeye luck. Good job, boy. Alright, we went 5-1. Defeated the final boss. Yay, Hawkeye. Good job. So... We got pretty fortunate a lot of the time in this league, right? Like, our first match, our opponent didn't even show up. So we just started with a win. Like, we all we did was mulligan to five and not get disconnected. So that was one win. Our second match, um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but our opponent didn't do very much. That's all I remember. Um, so that was our second win. Uh, but then we, we beat a Nexus player. We beat uh, blue green nexus, you know, you know, turbo fog, um, with the help of cinder vines. That was that was big time. Like the cinder vines got us uh, game three. Uh, we won like game one, then game three, and we just you know won that last one against blue black mid range, and we beat something else too. Um, oh right, and then oh that's right. The second match, our opponent. We won game one, and then our opponent had lethal on game two, so we thought we were going to a game three, but they forgot. They attacked with their Surge Mare and forgot to pump it, and it dealt zero damage, and so then I was at one. <laughs> and, and then they conceded. That's right. So we should have gone to a game three in that one. Um, no, I'm not planning on doing the popper this go-around, Faramon. I'm not, I'm not planning on that. Um, but yeah, our deck was pretty fun to play. I liked it. Um, yeah, I think as far as the sideboard goes, like maybe Rhythm of the Wild was probably our worst sideboard card. With us already having Domri, it seemed like, like what we wanted to bring in, it just kind of seemed like Rhythm of the Wild wasn't really that necessary. I think maybe, maybe some more Shaper Sanctuaries instead there. Um, against like the removal heavy decks. I don't know. I'm not sure, but that, that was probably my least favorite card in the sideboard was Rhythm of the Wild. Really like Cinder Vines, loved Collision Colossus. This card was awesome. Um, 
Wild Growth Walker and Darkly Daredevil are strong. Brought it on strong. So, there we go. Hilzy, you want another color for removal? I don't know. We had decent removal. Like, Lava Coil, Vivian Reed kill a lot of things. They, you know, that you want to kill. <clears throat> and Hellkite was, was honestly pretty impressive. Hellkite was very impressive. Really liked this card. We could also have uh, the six mana Ravager Worm. You know, could have that. Maybe even Ravager Worm's a cyborg card against, like, other mid-range decks. You bring in, like, your six drop to, like, eat something. I could see that being a thing. But this worked out pretty well. I, I like I like our sideboard, or sorry, I like our main deck. I think it's pretty clean, um, you know. So guest, if you know you want your want a Domri deck, I think this is pretty clean with all these four of's. Um, I think it, the main deck worked out pretty well, uh, for sure. So there we go, Gruel Monsters. All right. So if you're watching this later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, that's it for Gruel Monsters. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.